A bit of a surprise, but I think worthy to kick off the show, GP, with some tennis down under Serena Williams. A lot of GOAT conversation the last few weeks with Tom Brady picking up his seventh Super Bowl. But Serena Williams is right in that conversation. One grand slam away from tying the record of 24 over the course of her career. She's now advanced to a semifinal in the Australian Open. She'll take on Naomi Osaka. How impressed have you been, not just with what she's done here recently, but just Serena's arc? Uh, the entire career is already worthy of GOAT status. She's just adding to it right now. And she goes out at the age of 39 and 6-3, 6-3 straight sets beats the number two ranked woman in the world. You could stop right there and that is amazing. She seems to be moving as well as she's moved in years. It's been a fun ride to watch and now it sets up that incredible semifinal against Naomi Osaka. And even though Naomi is 2-1 and one all time against Serena, she's won three Grand Slam singles titles herself, has been ranked number one in the world. She admits she's still in awe of Serena Williams. Like when she looks across the net and sees Serena, she is intimidated. She said that this week. So it'll be interesting to see if that plays a role in this match at all. Either way, to be clear, Serena will be the underdog. That's undeniable. But the idea that she's now just two wins away from that 24th Grand Slam singles title at the age of 39. Again, really remarkable stuff. Absolutely. It's going to require us, Gary, to get up early, but this is the type of matchup that maybe you uh, make the sacrifice with a little less sleep to watch it. Keeping with the theme of maybe outside the norm, New York basketball, at least in the professional sense, maybe it's back, Gary, because if the playoffs started today, which would be weird, uh, the Knicks and Nets would face each other in the first round. We know the Nets and, and all the attention they're drawing for that big three that they've built. They haven't spent a lot of time on the court together, but they got a win over the Kings last night. Kyrie Irving and James Harden just putting up uh, big numbers. And then the Knicks and Julius Randle putting up massive point totals to beat the Hawks. As you look at this, is this something that's realistic to track and to when the, the playoffs might actually start? Uh, I wouldn't rule it out. I mean, we're about a third of the way through the season right now, and, and the Knicks look legitimate. You know, just one game under 500 on a three-game uh, winning streak. Julius Randle you know, got 44 last night. He's now averaging you know, 23 and 11, shooting above 40% from three-point range. He looks like an NBA all-star. So the Knicks uh, seem legitimate, like a playoff contender. And then you know, just across the East River, Brooklyn is starting to show why so many people were optimistic about the development to go add James Harden to Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. They've obviously got some stuff to work out on the defensive end of the court, but you know, Kyrie, you know, it made nine three pointers playing shooting guard uh, on, on Monday night. James Harden is averaging a triple double, seems to be a willing passer in this three game winning streak. So, I, I the, the key to uh, you know, winning a championship in this league is usually star power. How many stars do you have? Brooklyn has three stars, future Hall of Famers in the prime of their careers. And again, if they can figure out some stuff defensively, they look like they're going to be the biggest threat, perhaps, to the Lakers' uh, quest of winning back-to-back -back world championships. Let's head to college hoops. After yesterday's show and, and your Shine 9 and your GP 9, you got me jacked up for some college hoops. And obviously looking at that UVA – Florida State game that was kind of the highlight of the college hoop schedule last night and FSU just blew the doors off them with uh, 13 three pointers and and look it's just a night where you, you catch fire at home and, and maybe UVA has no answer but what, what was the important takeaway from that game. Well, you know, you wake up on Tuesday morning and Florida State and Virginia are tied in the loss column atop the ACC standings. FSU, you know, anytime you can shoot 50% from the field against a Virginia Tony Bennett coach team, um, that's obviously incredible. And so what's wild is that Leonard Hamilton and Florida State, they win the outright ACC title last season. They lose three of their top four scores, including a couple of lottery picks reasonably most people didn't think they would repeat but now they are in a position to repeat and that is incredible when you consider this Mike Krzyzewski has not won a regular season ACC title since 2010. Jim Beheim has been in the ACC at Syracuse since 2013-14 season has never won an ACC regular season title those are two active Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame coaches 
who haven't been able to do what Leonard Hamilton did last season as recently as Leonard Hamilton has done it. And obviously now Leonard Hamilton's got a chance to do it in back to back years. It's a testament to what most people in basketball have long understood. Leonard Hamilton is one of the very, very best basketball coaches that college basketball has to offer. I read that note somewhere. I think it was in uh, your column this morning, and, and it, it had me looking twice to not just know that Coach K hadn't won regular season since 2010, but that Beheim hasn't done it. 